It sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? The very thing that damaged you is the very thing that heals you. Relationships, letting down walls, releasing control. The thing which probably scares you the most is the thing that's going to liberate you and set you free. Think of a situation where there's a watercolor artist and they paint gorgeous landscapes. The pictures are beautiful and the artist doesn't want to keep them to themselves. They want to show the world their creativity, their artistic endeavors. So they have a showing in a gallery. But the artist can't just take their paintings and stick them up on a wall. They have to be presented. They have to be packaged. So the artist finds a framer, because let's just say this artist doesn't know much about framing. The artist has decided through discernment that this framer is someone to be trusted. So the artist shows complete vulnerability in giving their work to another. The artist needs this framer to bring their work to completion. So the artist, in complete vulnerability, gives their paintings to this framer, trusting that this framer will see what the artist is trying to say and bring it full circle, finding the perfect complementary frames for each and every one of the artist's expressions. So the artist surrenders, the artist trusts, the artist lets down their walls and gives their most intimate expressions to this person who then takes those intimate expressions and completes them, brings them full circle, creates something that others can see, provides a way that literally frames what the artist is trying to say. Because if you know anything about art, and that could be any kind of art that is fabric or paper, a frame can make or break the piece. The right frame can do wonders for a piece of artwork. The right frame almost brings out what's not seen and makes it seen. That's the kind of framer we need in our personal lives. It doesn't matter if it's a romantic relationship, although it certainly can be. But any time when you enter into a partnership with someone else, where you agree to surrender to them, that can be a healing relationship. You agree to give up control and to trust them, to trust that they will take what you offer and help you to make something beautiful of it, to make something beautiful of it together. So I look at relationships like that for us. You have to trust others in order for you to trust life's process. There is an element of surrender in relationships that's healing. We can't do it on our own. I wrote for years in journals, and in the moment, it was a release for me. I got it all out of my head. I got it on paper. But ultimately, it didn't heal me. Writing didn't heal me. I needed the relationship. I needed another person. I needed to be intimate with someone in a very personal way. Again, it can be a friendship, a romantic relationship, even a sibling relationship. Any partnership where you decide to surrender who you are in trust, when you completely trust the other person. I wrote for years and I couldn't heal. I couldn't heal from things I had experienced in my life. It was only when I started opening up to loved ones that I began to heal. So it can be any kind of relationship where people are vulnerable with one another. For instance, I can give a real tangible example here. I receive a good amount of comments on this channel from people who are expressing complete vulnerability with me. They say a lot of things to me I'm sure they haven't said to anyone else or to very few others in their lives. Because of this vulnerability, because people have chosen to gift me with the innermost parts of themselves, I am able to keep going here. It inspires me to keep creating and to keep shining the light on myself. Sometimes comments dig things up for me 
because we are all very much alike. So it sometimes causes me to reflect or to evaluate on something inside my own self. The words here are invaluable to me. It's a relationship of sorts. I know this is a temporary thing, but there is this element of going deep with someone you don't even know. It is like a relationship in the sense that you are vulnerable and open yourself up. I am vulnerable here. I keep a lot of things about my personal life private and I will continue to do so, but if you listen to my words here, I've said a lot. I've been very vulnerable. And some of you in return have been very vulnerable back, and it has helped me to bring it full circle. It's helped me to express my thoughts and reach even more people, so we do it together. And this is just another example of a type of relationship that is beneficial for both parties involved. In my loneliness video, I tried to stress the point that even though it's important for us to take care of ourselves, we can't do it alone. We can do some of the work, but I believe we need others to bring it full circle. I'm a gardener, so I can use a gardening example to help prove my point. When there's a drought, and when my tomato plants aren't receiving the rain they need to grow, I will self-water my plants. I'll fill up buckets, bring the water out, and give them a nice long drink of water from the well. The water is excellent here. It's a deep well. The water is clear and refreshing. It helps the plants. They're able to grow. But there is nothing like the water that comes from above. There's nothing like the water that is provided by someone else. There is nothing like the water my garden gets that comes from the heavens. That water is different than the water I provide. It's amazing because you can see the difference. I can water and water and water my garden from the hose. But when it rains, and it's a good long soaking rain, the plants respond. There is nothing like a tomato that comes from a plant that's been watered from the heavens. It's different than the one that's been watered by my hand. They grow in ways they never could with water from the hose. It's so different. They are lush and full and hydrated and they produce beautiful fruits. You can actually witness growth after a night of a soaking rain. You can see it with your eyes. This has been a recent thing with me, this healing. I was having nightmares for a while. I was having nightmares about my parents. I saw my father as this evil figure that caused fear and anger in me, all those negative emotions. I even recorded one of those dreams here on this channel. But now, when I dream of them, I don't have that anymore. I'm having dreams about them now where they are just my parents and everything is normal. There's no anger. There's no fear. They're just there, being kind of who they were. And the other night, I had a dream that I went to see my father at his workplace, and I let the people know I was there to see him. He came downstairs to see me, and he hugged me, and I clung to him. I hugged him, and he was a normal father. He was a normal person. He was a loving man, and I felt it when I hugged him. And I woke up that morning thinking to myself, I think I'm beginning to heal. But it wasn't going to happen without relationships in my life. I couldn't have done it alone. I needed someone else. I needed others in my life to make the circle complete. That's how I see it in our own lives. We can give ourselves what we need. We can take care of ourselves, but it's not going to get us to really bloom in a satisfactory way. We need others to grow and to heal. We must surrender and yield to the power of another. If we do so, the growth that comes about in our lives will be measurable. It can be seen with the eyes. It can be felt with the heart. It's real and it's lasting and it changes our lives forever.